Welcome to this Arnold Culliford Knitwear tutorial on working a gusset heel for toe-up socks. This tutorial is part of our Boost Your Knitting series, 12 projects to teach you 12 new techniques from the world's best knitting designers. If you'd like to find out more about Boost Your Knitting or purchase kits or yarns to go with any of the projects in the book, then do click the link up here to go over to our website where you'll find all the information that you need. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be using Wendy Johnson's lovely Alcedo socks to demonstrate how to work the heel. They're started at the toe and you increase until you've got your desired uh, circumference for your foot and you then work a gusset before working the short rows that turn the heel. When working toe-up socks, you quite often might use a, an afterthought heel, and the gusset heel is a nice alternative to that that gives a little bit more space across the instep. So it's worth trying different constructions to see which one works best for your feet. This is a sock in progress that has been cast on at the toe. Increases have been worked until the circumference of the foot was correct for my feet. And then I've been working in pattern with stocking stitch on the sole and this lovely texture pattern on the top of the foot. And when we've reached the right point according to the pattern, we've then worked a series of increases on each side of the upper foot or instep stitches and we've now finished those increases and they're what's going to form the gusset of the sock so they give extra space over the arch of the foot over the instep and we've increased by 20 stitches. My stitches are set up on double pointed needles but you could equally be using magic loop or a small circular or two circular needles, whichever you prefer, it doesn't make any difference. But we are now set up so that our instep stitches can be left to one side while we work backwards and forwards on the sole stitches. Where we've worked the increases to create the gusset for this toe-up sock, we've taken the sole stitches and we've increased them to 1.6 to 1.8 times what they were at the start of the pattern. So for my size, I started with 28 stitches on the sole and I've now gone up to 48 stitches. I've added 20 extra. We're now going to work across the stitches and we're going to leave unworked two stitches fewer than the number that we increased on the gusset. So I increased 20 stitches. So I'm going to work until I've got 18 stitches remaining and it's going to be 18 unworked at the end and it'll be the same on the other side when I go back that way and that just gives you the right shape for your heel. So I'm going to knit across the correct number of stitches as given in my pattern and if you've worked out your own toe up gusset heel then you know how many you're going to need to leave unworked at the end of this first row. So I want to leave 18 stitches unworked. So we count back 18. 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. And I'm going to be working SSK knit one right at the end of my row. So I just need to knit another three here. Obviously, if you're following a pattern, it's going to tell you how many stitches to knit, so you just follow the instructions. Now I work an SSK decrease. Do that by slipping the first stitch knitwise. I slip the first, second stitch purlwise, but you can also slip it knitwise. And then knit them together through the back loops. That's your SSK decrease, and then I knit one. And I should have now my 18 stitches remaining. That was two less than how many I increased on the gusset. 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Perfect. 
And now I'm going to turn round and work back in the other direction. And I'm going to slip the first stitch and then purl. And now likewise, I want to leave 18 stitches unworked on this side. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. And I'm going to be working purl one and purl two together. So it's again, just another three I was arranged symmetrically. And now I'm going to work a purl two together and purl one. And if we look at our heel stitches, should now be able to see we've got our 18 unworked on this side, we've got 18 unworked on that side, and where we turned the last row, we've got a gap on the needles between the stitches where the turn happened. And we're gonna have a similar gap here when we turn now. And those gaps are the things that you need to identify because once you've got your gap on each side, you can then work the rest of the heel turn without having to um, count the number of stitches. Because what we're now gonna do is turn and work until we're one stitch before the gap. As before, we're going to start by slipping the first stitch purl-wise. And now we're going to knit across until we're one stitch before that gap. If we have a look on the needles, there's the gap. So I've got to do two more knits. and I'm now one stitch before the gap, and I'm now going to work my SSK decrease using the stitches either side of the gap, and it closes that gap up nicely and allows us to get a really neat turn. So again, slip, slip, and then I knit those two together, and knit one more. And now we're creating a new gap where we turn here, so we turn the work around, And we look on the other side for where the gap is that we're going to work to and we're now going to slip one and then purl until we're one stitch before the gap. I've purled until I'm one stitch before the gap, there's my last stitch, and I'm now going to work my purl two together using the stitch before and after the gap in order to close it. So purl two together, purl one, and then I turn. And I'm starting here to get the turn of the heel. We're now going to repeat those two rows across the heel until we've used up all of the heel stitches. So we work on the right side, slip one, knit all the way across until one stitch before the gap. SSK decrease across the gap, knit one, and then we turn and we slip one, purl all the way back until we're one stitch before the gap, purl two together across the gap, purl one, and then we turn and repeat those two rows. I'm now ready to work the last pair of rows in the heel turn and you can see how the curve of the sock is beginning to form there. So I slip one and then knit. Mm. 
And now one stitch before the gap, so we slip, slip, knit them together. And now my last stitch I've actually got up on this needle with the marker showing me where the instep stitches start. And then I'm turning, not losing the marker. And that stitch gets slipped back onto that needle. And then I'm going to purl across for the very final heel turn row. And there's the gap. And so that's our last stitch before the gap. We're going to purl two together across it. And then again on this side I've actually got my final purl stitch on the new needle with the marker there showing the end of the instep stitches. So we've now worked every single stitch in the heel and just to complete it we're going to slip one and then knit round to our start of the round marker. So slip that first stitch there onto that needle and then we're going to and now we're going to knit round and we should now have the same number of heel stitches as we had sole stitches before the gusset increases started. So for my size that's 28. And one of the great things about this particular construction is that you don't need to pick up any stitches. When you work a, <coughs> when you work a heel flap and turn construction in a cuff down sock you have to pick up stitches along the edges of the heel flap to get a similar shape to this one. Whereas in the toe up version you don't need to pick up any stitches because you've got them all there ready and waiting. Here's our last heel stitch. I'm going to knit that. And now we're back at the start of the round marker. And from this point on, we're going to be working in pattern across the all of the stitches in the round. Let's slip that one there to keep the marker in place. And you can see that we've turned our heel. We've made a bend in our sock and we're now ready to work up the leg. Thank you for watching our tutorial on the toe up gusset heel. I hope now you feel really confident in using it in future sock projects. If you'd like to find out more about our book Boost Your Knitting or any of our other techniques led books or yarns and kits as well as knitters treats then do click the link up here to go over to our website Every purchase from our website allows us to create more video tutorials for you to enjoy. So thank you ever so much for your support. If you'd like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, then you'll be the first to know when we release new video tutorials and you can subscribe by clicking on the round icon on the screen. Thank you ever so much for watching. Bye bye.